I benchmarked the new 9060 XT versus the 5060 Ti and the results are gonna surprise you. The 9060 XT is from XFX and the 5060 Ti is from MSI. Both are 16 gig variants, but they are a little bit different with the 9060 XT being GDDR6 and the 5060 Ti being GDDR7. What makes these results so interesting is the MSRP pricing for both of these cards. The 5060 Ti comes in at a whopping $429, while the 9060 XT comes in at a whopping $349, which is $80 cheaper than the Nvidia counterpart. Yes, I couldn't remember those numbers and I had to look. Both of these cards are placed in our new test bench that has an AMD 9900X3D CPU, Lexar 32 gigs of RAM, 6000 speed, C26, MSI X870E carbon motherboard, and all these tests are gonna be tested in 1080p as well as 1440p. All the games that we're gonna be testing today have in-game benchmarking tools, so if you wanna put your rig to the test and match the settings that I'll be showing you guys before every test, you're more than welcome to, and please let me know your results in the comments below. Also, just a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm only gonna be showing you guys one set of settings and that's gonna be for the 9060 XT at 1080p. The only thing that'll be changing between the settings is obviously the resolution going from 1080p to 1440p, as well as when you're going from an AMD card, FSR is gonna be turned on to quality. And when you have an Nvidia card in, DLSS is gonna be on and also set to quality. Again, friendly reminder, we're gonna be doing no frame gen and also no ray tracing today. I don't wanna to take too much of your time. Let's just jump right into it. The first game on our list is Cyberpunk at 1080p on ultra settings and ray tracing turned off. The 5060 Ti did squeak out the win on average FPS with it being at 123.6 and their 1% low is at 88.1. The 9060 XT on the other hand had 120.5 FPS with 91.5 1% lows. Something to note is that the average VRAM usage for both these cards was under eight. So the eight gig variant of both these cards would perform just as well. At 1440p, similar results with the 5060 Ti coming in at 78.2 average FPS, while the 9060 XT came in at 76.2 FPS. Not a big difference, probably wouldn't even notice it, but there is a difference. The 1% lows for the 5060 Ti came in at 61.9, while the 9060 XT came in at 60.9. Same thing here, the average VRAM usage for both these cards was under eight, so the eight key variant would be just fine. The next game on our list is Monster Hunter Wilds at 1080p. We went with max settings and ray tracing turned off. The 9060 XT took the win here with 92.5 average FPS with their 1% lows being at 58. The 5060 Ti on the other hand averaged 86.2 FPS with the minimum 1% at 56.5. Thing to note here is the VRAM usage is close to 12 gigs of VRAM, so you would need to adjust the settings a little bit to get that VRAM usage under eight to have a smooth experience with the eight gig variants. At 1440p, the 9060 XT again took the win with 75.2 FPS average with the 1% lows at 48.1. 5060 Ti on the other hand had 71.5 FPS with the 1% lows at 46.7. Again, with the VRM usage being close to 12, settings tweaks will have to happen if you have the 8 gig variant to make this game run smoothly. The next game on our list is a Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p on ultra settings. This game again, the 5060 Ti won with 168.4 average FPS with the 1% lows of 118.8. The 9060 XT on the other hand averaged 162.2 with the minimum 1% at 117.1. The VRAM usage again for this game was over eight gigs of VRAM, so the eight gig variant would definitely struggle and some setting tweaks would need to happen. At 1440p, a similar result happened. The 5060 Ti came out with the win. 130 average FPS with the 1% lows of 96.5. The 9060 XT on the other hand had 117.6 FPS averaged with the 1% lows at 92.3. Again, VRM usage over eight, a gig variant will definitely have to be adjusted in the settings to get a smooth gaming experience. The next game on our list is Black Myth Wukong at 1080p on cinematic settings with no ray tracing turned on. 
Again, the 5060 Ti squeaked out with the win here with 43.7 average FPS, with the 1% lows being at 37.6. The 960, on the other hand, averaged 39.2 FPS, with the 1% lows at 34.6. The VRAM usage on this game was creeping onto the 8 gig amount, but I do think you would have a very smooth gaming experience because I didn't see it ever hit the 8 gig. With a few minor adjustments, I'm sure you'll never touch it. At 1440p, a very similar result with the 5060 Ti coming out with the win at 46.9 average FPS with the 1% lows at 40.7. The 9060 XT, on the other hand, had 38 0.5 average FPS with the 1% lows at 34.1. Again, with the VRAM creeping onto the 8 gig amount, but never ever reaching there. So I do think you have a gaming experience, pretty smooth one with the 8 gig variant. Something worth to mention, the FPS was very similar between 1080p and 1440p on both these cards. We move on to COD at 1080p on max settings. This is where the 9060 XT really starts to stand out with an average 138.9 FPS with the 1% lows at 88.5. The 5060 Ti on the other hand averaged 116.4 FPS with the 1% lows at 84.4. VRM usage way over eight, you will struggle with the 8 gig variant on these settings. 1440p, a lot of the same 9060 XT outperformed the 5060 Ti with 104.2 average FPS with the 1% lows at 76.9. The 5060 Ti, on the other hand, averaged 84.5 with 61.6 1% lows. Again, VRAM way over 8. Don't worry, we also tested it on min settings for all you competitive gamers at 1080p. The 9060 XT still outperformed the 5060 Ti. The 9060 XT averaged 230.4 FPS with the 1% lows at 171.5. The 5060 Ti averaged 193.8 FPS with the 1% lows at 142.5 with the VRAM usage way under 8. At 1440p, you see a lot of the same results with the 9060 XT outperforming the 5060 Ti, averaging 171.2 FPS with the 1% lows of 127.7, with the 5060 Ti averaging 146.1 FPS with the 1% lows of 103.9, with the VRAM under 8. Lastly, we ran both these cards through the 3D Mark benchmarking software at 1440p. The 9060XT averaged 38.3 FPS with the 1% lows being at 33. The 5060Ti, on the other hand, averaged 35.6 FPS with the 1% lows being at 32.3. VRM usage was under 8, which again, with the 8GB variant, you would see very similar results. I know this might get some people angry, but I do like showing this. I wanted to show that not only the score of both of these benchmarks, but the different FPSs you can get uh, on popular games with these individual cards on ultra settings. I hope that data helped you guys. This is my fourth ever benchmarking video. If you guys are interested in any of the other comparisons, you can go check those out on our channel. But I am trying to get better at this every single time I do it. So if you have any constructive criticism, please leave it in the comments below. With all the data that we collected today, which graphics card would you put into your next build and tell me why and also put that in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time today and I'll see you guys in the next one.